Sea Sharks, it's Miss Amanda from the library. It's African American Heritage Month. Today we're going to read a book that discusses some of the discrimination African Americans went through in our history. It also points out the ways they came together to overcome. I hope you enjoy Ruth and the Green Book. Ruth and the Green Book. Written by Calvin Alexander Ramsey with Gwen Strauss. Illustrations by Floyd Cooper. It was a big day at our house when daddy drove up in our very own automobile, a 1952 Buick. It was the most beautiful color. Daddy calls it Sea Mist Green. He bought it for his new job, but first we planned to go on a trip to visit grandma in Alabama. I was so excited to travel across the country. I packed my own bag and mama said I could take Brown Bear with me for company, even though I'm almost too old for him. As we drove out of Chicago, it felt funny to see the neighborhood disappear and then the streets and then the buildings. I love all the green grass and hills and trees. Daddy told lots of stories about when he was a boy in Alabama. He made us laugh. Eventually, we stopped and had a picnic lunch that Mama had packed. She had been cooking all week to get ready for the trip. After driving for a long time, we stopped at a service station to fill up on gas. As Daddy was paying the station attendant, Mama asked for the keys to the restroom. The man said we couldn't use the restrooms because they were for whites only. Mama and I had to go in the woods. I was embarrassed. But Mama said the people who should be ashamed of themselves were those service station owners. I was tired when Daddy stopped the automobile. I asked Mama where we were, and she said we were going to spend the night in a real hotel. We watched Daddy talking to the man behind the desk. Daddy was smiling and pointing to us, but the man shook his head and turned his back. Daddy came back out and slammed the car door. He never slammed the door before, so I knew he was mad. I wondered what happened, but I knew somehow it wasn't a good time to ask him. Mama gave me a look that said, Ruth, just keep quiet. So that's what I did. We kept on driving through the night. Mama took a turn so Daddy could sleep. I fell asleep with Brown Bear as my pillow. We must have pulled off the road in the middle of the night because when I woke in the morning, we were all curled up in the car. I was stiff and hungry. Mama gave us cold biscuits and jam for breakfast. She said we should sing to cheer ourselves up. We sang a lot that day as we crossed the country. We had picnics at roadside stops for lunch and dinner because all the restaurants had signs in the windows that said we couldn't eat there. It seemed like there were white-only signs everywhere outside of our Chicago neighborhood. I felt homesick and I hugged Brown Bear closely all day. When we crossed into Tennessee, Daddy said his friend Eddie lived close by. He was sure we could sleep there. Eddie was so happy to see us. He gave me a big hug and told me that he knew me when I was real little. His wife, Alice, cooked us a warm meal and I ate too much. Daddy and Eddie used to play music in a band before they went off and fought in the war. They talked about how they traveled a lot back then and how they always had a hard time finding places to rest and eat. Daddy shook his head and said he had hoped that the war had changed things, but now he could see he was wrong. That night, I went to sleep to the sound of Daddy and Eddie playing music together. Brown Bear and I were happy to sleep in a real bed with a real pillow. The next day, as we loaded the car, I heard Eddie talking quietly to Mama and Daddy. Eddie warned them about what was ahead. Someone called Jim Crow. I heard Eddie tell them that however bad it was so far, it was only going to get worse for us, maybe even dangerous, as we were farther south. Then Eddie saw me listening, and he picked me up and told me not to worry. He said that I should look out for SO service stations along the road because the people there would be nice to us. In the car, I asked Daddy who Jim Crow was, and he explained that Jim Crow wasn't a who. It was a bunch of ugly laws forbidding blacks and whites from mixing in any way. I asked, 
Why don't they want our business? Wasn't our money just the same? It hurt my feelings to be so unwelcome. But Mama sighed and reminded me that my job that day was to look for an ESSO station. I spotted an ESSO station near the Georgia border and sang out for Daddy to stop. Daddy filled the car up and asked the man if he knew where we could sleep for the night. The man showed us a pamphlet called the Negro Motorist Green Book. He explained this book was started by a postman, Mr. Victor H. Green, to help black people who were traveling. It lists places in lots of states where we would be welcome to sleep, eat, shop, get a haircut, and all kinds of other information besides. Right away, Daddy bought our very own copy for 75 cents. Mama read about a place nearby called a tourist home where we could stay for the last night of our trip. Daddy called ahead and sure enough, the lady told us to come right away. Then Mama gave me the green book and said I was in charge of keeping it. I couldn't stop reading it. All those places and all those states where we could go and not worry about being turned away. We reached the tourist home in the early evening. Mrs. Melody, the owner, gave us a big smile when she opened the door. It was like coming home and she wouldn't even let daddy pay her. She said she welcomed Negro travelers because it was right to help each other out. I'm going to do the same one day. The next morning, I hated to say goodbye to Mrs. Melody, but daddy said we could be at grandma's house that evening. That made me happy to get going again. It wasn't so easy though. Our automobile broke down about midday in the middle of nowhere. People drove right past. I felt empty in the pit of my stomach. I hugged Brown Bear and wished we were already at Grandma's house. But Mama said not to worry. We could figure this out. She unfolded our map and told me the names of nearby towns. She said, Ruth, look in the green book and see if you can find a place that one of these towns will fix our car. And I did. Daddy gave me a big hug and then he walked into town to find the garage that would help us. By the time we got the car fixed, it was too late to reach Grandma's house that day. So I took in the green book and picked out an inn nearby that said they welcome Negro travelers. It was a big house with lots of rooms. Most of the people there were businessmen traveling for their jobs. They each carried a green book. They said they could never do their jobs without it. We met a salesman named Jason who had traveled to all the states in the union for his job. He told such funny stories. Mama laughed so hard she had tears rolling down her face. For the first time since we left home, we were all really happy. At the inn, I met a little boy who was traveling with his mother. It was the first time he'd ever left home and I could tell he was scared. I thought of Mrs. Melody, Victor Green, Eddie, and all the other people who had helped us. And then I decided to give Brown Bear to the boy. I told him that Brown Bear was a good traveler. I'm too old for Brown Bear now, and the little boy needed him more than I do. Then I told his mother about the green book and showed her our copy. That night, before I went to sleep, I thought about our trip. It was not what I had expected. Traveling could be scary, that's for sure. It made me sad that some people were mean to Negroes but it helped to know that good black people all over the country had pitched in to help each other. It felt like I was part of one big family. Plus tomorrow, I would finally see grandma and tell her what a great green book guide I had been. The History of the Negro Motorist Green Book. Decades after the Emancipation Proclamation and the 13th Amendment ended slavery, African Americans continued to suffer unequal treatment, especially in the South, where Jim Crow laws discriminated against Blacks in nearly every aspect of public life, including travel. Although the roads and highways were free to all to use, doing so was not easy for Blacks. Most hotels and restaurants would not serve African Americans, and driving overnight often meant sleeping in cars and packing food to eat during the journey. 
many gas stations would not sell gas to black drivers, so they had to carry gas cans and always be on the lookout for the few stations that would welcome their business. Even then, they might not be allowed to use the public restroom. In 1936, an African-American living in New York City named Victor Green wrote a book to help black travelers. He made a list of all the hotels, restaurants, gas stations, and businesses that would serve African-Americans in his city. There was such a high demand for his book that he decided his next edition would include other towns in other states as well. The Green Book was sold for a quarter in 1940 at Black-owned businesses and at Esso stations, which were among the only gas stations that sold to African Americans. Esso was owned by the Standard Oil Company, which eventually provided funding and offices for Victor Green. The Green Book quickly became very popular and helped many businessmen on the road, as well as families who needed and wanted to drive by car. By 1949, the price of the Green Book had grown along with its size. It cost 75 cents and was 80 pages. It covered all the United States, Bermuda, Mexico, and Canada. In the 1950s and early 1960s, civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. brought national and international recognition to the injustices suffered by African Americans. Jim Crow's days were numbered. On July 2, 1964, President Lyndon Johnson signed the Civil Rights Bill into law. Among other things, this act made it illegal for hotels, restaurants, and gas stations to discriminate against customers. Victor Green published the final edition of the Green Book that same year, 1964. His lifelong dream to see African-American travelers treated equally was finally a reality. To view a copy of a real Green Book online, visit www.ruthandthegreenbook.com.